Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's December 6th, 2023. Just about 20 minutes to go to the cash close here on this Wednesday afternoon. The S&Ps are off some 19 handles right now. And uh, yeah, some volatility starting to emerge in this marketplace has us asking the question, is the Santa Claus rally canceled? All right, so when I start taking a really objective look at the tape, and you know, we're not just talking about the S&Ps, I'm saying the entire picture, you start looking at the S&Ps and the bond market, oil, which we're gonna talk about here momentarily, a couple of individual stocks. I mean, this is like looking at one of those pictures and it says, you know, oh, what's wrong with this picture? Allow me to explain. So as I was saying a moment ago, the S&Ps are down 18, which it is not even the daily expected move inside of the SPX. You know, the, uh, the NASDAQ's off by about a half a percent. Again, hasn't even moved to the edge of what was expected for the day. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves with the, you know, it's an emergence of volatility. Look, okay, we're down today, but as I said, it looks like some volatility is starting to emerge, but 20 minutes to go for all I know, this thing could bid right back up. The interesting area is that uh, today, really specific to the NASDAQ, it's actually been a pretty wild range overall. And again, just to kind of quantify, you're up here at 16,037, right at the opening bell. There is a precipitous drop okay, to the tune of about uh, 100 NQ handles. Uh, meanwhile, where are we right now? That's right, from 16,037 to uh, roughly 15,800, we'll call it 37. Oh, what's 200 handles amongst friends? So the range overall is fairly significant. It's a big time reversal on the day. But as I said, like, you know, reading into a tape like this, ah, I don't think it's going to do it justice. It's, it's more or less, okay, in the bigger picture, what is wrong? So let's, let's start with this. Expected move in the NASDAQ tech right now is riding, if you will, the lower edge of its expected move. And, and I want to bring this into scope right off the bat, um, because as I was saying, so here's NASDAQ and the NASDAQ right now, so it's riding the lower edge of the expected move. Any lower than this, things could actually start to really kind of break down. So we're on that kind of threshold, if you will, specific to the NASDAQ, right? And when you start looking through a couple of what we term the monsters of technology, the Magnificent Seven, we'll start with like Microsoft, okay? Bring up its auto expected move. Microsoft, very close. Actually, yesterday, touching the lower edge of the expected move, bouncing back out of it. Uh, today was like unchanged in the week. Again, you just, you can't even believe the price action in here. You know, for a marketplace that's sitting it's one of the things that's wrong with the marketplace sitting at like a 12 vol. Yeah, how is Microsoft on Monday cracking through the lower edge of the expected move, rallying back up, okay, literally unchanged in the week and reverting back down? I mean, that's that's actually some pretty heavy movement. Meanwhile, Apple, Apple is kind of the uh, the odd tech stock out this week. Apple cracking back into the three trillion dollar club, but um, Apple hit the upper edge of the expected move, hit it today again and faded off of it. Apple is up very very mildly. Take a look at uh, Amazon. The reason I'm bringing these up individually because it means quite a bit. We're aligned right now for a pretty significant break, and you've seen some damage kind of inflicted. Google, which was uh, brutally hit last week. Again, it's about halfway home to the lower edge of its expected move. Uh, Meta. Meta is literally hanging on to the lower edge of its expected move by a wing and a prayer. Tesla is right now unimpacted. And then NVIDIA. NVIDIA hanging on to the lower edge of its expected move. As I said, most of that Magnificent 7 okay, are, are really kind of pushing, if you will, a bit lower. And again, before you get ahead of yourself, you know, with this, as I said, the NASDAQ, it ain't even over yet. The bell hasn't gone off and this thing could still, you know, rip back to the upside. But again, when it comes to riding the lower edge of that expected move, it is 
fairly critical. And you're going to want to watch, obviously, Thursday and Friday very, very closely, specific okay, to that Magnificent Seven. There has not been great performance okay, out of big tech for quite some time. To, again, very objective look at it. Here's NASDAQ. Okay, what has the NASDAQ done, roughly speaking? Well, for about the last three weeks, absolutely nothing. However, that absolutely nothing is presently facing the uh, the lower kind of edge, if you will, of its, well, three-week range. Moreover, let's go back to the S&Ps for just a moment and uh, bring into scope, this is a 30-day, again, a 30-day one hour. And to, uh, to sum up, if you will, the, uh, the last few weeks of trade, right, we're boxed in right now in a 50 handle range. This is 45.50 to uh, just below about 4,600, right? So we're boxed in, but we're again, we're also in the S&P is the lower edge of that range. Now, that does not necessarily dictate that we're going to rip lower. However, there's some other things that, I think are really going to start to provide pressure to this marketplace. One of which is the dollar. The dollar now looks like, yeah, officially, and I think everybody here at uh, Theotrade has been talking about this, the dollar does officially look like it's actually changed trend back to the upside. If that is true and it's, you know, continues to actually head a little bit higher, I think that that's incredibly bearish in the near term for the S&Ps. I know. Always, always the bear. There's a lot more than that, though, going on. So as the dollar starts to rally back, okay, oil at this point is just downright disconcerting. And the reason that I'm bringing up oil is it's incredibly recessionary. I mean, this is brutal in terms, and, and again, you can come up with a bunch of different reasons for price action inside of oil, but, you know, OPEC sustaining the cuts, okay, the United States is actually producing a lot. I, I got it. I got it all. But, you know, the reality, it just came off from 80, okay, and just cracked $70 a barrel in what? One, two, three, four, and this is the fifth trading session in a row. That's brutal. doesn't matter what you think, okay? It's absolutely recessionary at this point. Meanwhile, if you take a look at the bond market, the bond market actually continues to rally. And with the bond market rallying, what are interest rates doing? Interest rates are coming down. They're coming down hard, which is very much recessionary, okay? And that's one of the areas of contention that I have with the marketplace right now is if you actually take a look at this at TNX, okay? That's the interest rate, which is falling off the edge of a cliff right now. And of course, everybody's expecting the Fed now to cut rates, which I think is a huge setup for failure. Because if the Fed doesn't cut, or the Fed comes out next week and says, sustained higher for longer, which is what they've actually been preaching, higher rates for longer, this market's a setup for failure, okay? I also want you to think about the fact that rates are falling off the edge of a cliff over here. Meanwhile, the financials, they love it, Okay, that is one of the most incredibly bearish things that I've seen. You've actually got financials that are holding the S&Ps together, okay, which have reversed to some degree today, but the financials are holding the S&Ps together, and yet the financials, what do they like? They like higher interest rates. No, not in this case. In this case, they'll take lower interest rates. Meanwhile, you're going to love this story, okay? There's a story out of uh, City today. Okay, why am I bringing up City? Oh, because City guided lower today. They guided lower. And and what did the stock do? Well, initially the stock actually dipped because you know when a stock is not making as much money, you would think they would guide lower right up until the point they actually ripped. It's fading a little bit into the close. But uh, check that story out for yourself. Okay, it's good stuff. The CFO of the corporation came out. Okay, we're guiding lower, and they uh, they actually rallied the stock. All right, it was uh, again. Um, says revenue. And again, if you want to see revenue expected to be the lower end of guidance, gotta love that. Uh, coming in short and rallying on it. All right. So tech riding the lower edge of the expected move. Oil's recessionary. XLF is rallying on falling interest rates. City, okay, guiding lower. Uh, guiding lower, but the stock actually rallying. Where else do you want to go? The last place I want to look over here is the SPX. Uh, and the reason I want to go to the SPX, the mother of all products, as I call it, the SPX and the uh, S&Ps themselves are also very close and approaching the lower edge of the expected move. Now, in the SPX this week, the lower edge of the expected move, it's 45.38. Now, here, look, quantify for just a second. 
it's not that big of a week. We're only expecting about, I think, a $56 move in the entire week, right? This is stuff that we were talking about on the weekend update here, but it was about a $56, $57 expected move. Not huge, but we are relatively close to it. And I think at this point in time, uh, I'll go ahead and say like, hey, look, there's an incredibly, incredibly high probability of tagging right down there. And again, I reiterate, the lower edge of that expected move, okay, the lower edge of that expected move is right around 4538, but that is in the SPX, right, 4538. Uh, I would look for that to print in the uh, in the next uh, trading session, possibly on uh, on Friday. So again, a little bit of an emergence of volatility. The last thing I just wanted to make a quick comment on is when I start talking about like a little bit of an emergence, if you will, of volatility, we need to stop looking at VIX. And VIX is a completely dead instrument. The VIX is uh, handicapping 30 day, 30 day implied volatility. It's an average of 30 day implied volatility. Uh, meanwhile, okay, one thing you have to recognize is that short term volatility volatility has actually picked up quite considerably. We're actually in a little bit of a uh, little bit of a backwardation, but that also has to do, of course, with the jobs number coming out this Friday. I mean, we're all going to have to face a bit more volatility. So whatever we might think right now, S&P is again kind of backing off, threatening not only the lower edge of the range in the S&Ps, but also threatening expected moves both in NASDAQ and in the SPX. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at The O-Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.